Listen, mm-hmm. I did. I just did two. Yeah. Uh, weekend runs nice. in March. Sound like you did get the runs on one of those. <laughs> oh, oh <man. laughs> The Shug, Shane Hollister, Logan, Anaiken, Lyndon, Ailers, Rasslin, with music and life for life. <laughs> 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 Started with the wide. Rasp with Music and Life, episode 49. I got it right this time. Yeah. Because last did. time I was retarded. <laughs> can't say that. <laughs> Within the first 40 seconds. Uh, no, there's a lot going on. Um, obviously, it's WrestleMania weekend, <clears throat> which is a big thing for pro wrestling. Uh, the biggest thing, literally. Uh, the Super Bowl. Uh, I watched it last night. You probably didn't. I, I honestly didn't even <laughs> Well, I've been busy. I've been busy. You've actually been a busy. So boy. wrestling isn't hasn't exactly crept its way into my right into my world, and that's fine because yeah. there's a lot going on. Uh, big topic for me, and this is how I wanted to start this because I yeah. knew we're not going to get pro wrestling heavy when we're musicians. And sure, that's what we. I'm not saying you don't like pro wrestling, but yeah. Well, no, I I, I don't not like pro wrestling um, lately, but, it's but been I am. Great. I am. I mean, the whole reason I was on the show was because I'm right. the one that doesn't really follow it, even mm-hmm. though I grew up with everybody that does. But you followed The Rock when you were a kid. Yeah, he's I, back. that's fair. Yeah, he's back and he's phenomenal. Yeah, he's, he's literally man. bringing the attitude. He's era the fucking back. man. Yeah, I did see he's a clip. Fuck. I did. See, yeah, I saw a clip. I saw a clip of him uh, talking shit to like Triple H. Yeah. Uh, kind of an impromptu. You know what what promos right. are now? Yeah. At least on the big, at least from what I can say, see on like the the big scale of it. Right. It's like these weird little. It's like, like you better fix this shit. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's just like he's talking shit about our fucking family. Yeah. It's like I love I love that they're doing more of that. Reality like, is always the best. Yeah. Like really with anything. Uh, well, I mean, it's ever yeah. since like I remember that uh, like CM Punk like sitting down on the. The pipe bomb. The, yeah. What mm-hmm. do they call it? Which that is whole weird. That whole thing. <laughs> and like me at the time, not knowing how things were going then, I was right. like, what the fuck is going on with wrestling? Right. You know, but then it was all part of the thing, obviously. Yeah. But yeah, super cool. So uh, a I'm lot's going on that's actually cool with that. I mean, the one, the thing I wanted to talk about is probably yeah. not too cool to talk about because really? uh, I've noticed that a lot of people, and again, this is not. This is not genres we're in at all. And sure. I say we, I mean, you know, trying to get back in it. But, you know, <laughs> you, you know metal music, obviously, is, is a different thing. And I'd like to talk about that a little bit more just because it, it is kind of like, in, in my opinion, the most, auth- most authentic, um, I guess, genre, in my opinion. Like, and I, I, I don't know, we'll get into it. What I'm saying, though, it, to start this off, is a lot of people are coming out and they're, you know, mostly rappers. But like a lot of pop music are coming out and saying that the whole game is rigged like WWE. Like it's basically so. Say for instance, uh, the one guy I, I, and I forget his name because I don't listen to his music. But he went on like uh, Schultz's podcast and he was explaining how his numbers are padded. They literally like you might have eighty thousand listeners, but if you get in with the right people, and I'm not going to say who they are mm. because there's a lot of controversy. You know. A lot of things going on with that. Yeah. Uh, But they will say, "Uh, it's actually 180. You know what I mean? They pad the number. Yeah. And Spotify, on all of them, YouTube, Spotify. And uh, it's leading to a lot of people, like, getting online that are just, I mean, obviously more successful than than most people we know. Sure, most people. But (laughs) they're getting on there and going like, hey, you know, my number should be this. Because when you go to my show, it's actually fucking packed. Yeah. When you go to this guy's show, nobody yeah. shows up. Well, why are they talking about like Spotify monthlies, like monthly Just listeners? in general. That's like the number one piece of data for Spotify as far yeah, as anybody's and, and concerned. I get those and I'm, you know, I mean, two listeners. Hey, hey, I put Spotify you on our Lindy. playlist. So, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, uh, you know, I, what the fuck could I say about like, uh, mainstream, uh, music business, it probably is right. in every aspect of every kind of entertainment. At the very top, there's there's probably some bullshit. Um, I what the fuck does it even matter when you are right. like I mean somebody 
anywhere even near something like Taylor Swift. What the fuck does do those numbers even matter at that point? So that's kind of what he made. He made the point. Uh, I forget his name, but he made the point. It's like, guys, uh, the, the the lady had eight hundred million freaking yeah. listens. Uh, if they put a billion, like, what does it matter? Yeah. Right. Well. It kind of matters because it trickles down. So, say for instance, the the low man on on the totem pole of of pop music, whoever that is, who's doing legitimate good music. Yeah, maybe has an actual band instead of just one little laptop. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And that person is pretty much like pigeonholed. They're screwed or blackballed. I there's, guess, you know, I mean, there's, but it's it's not just because of like somebody huge, you know, mm-hmm. where they're they're taking up. Uh, some some imaginary kind of space that exists, you know, right. with streaming. It's it's also like well, like uh, yesterday, um, a coworker of mine was talking about this Spotify artist. Or it's actually uh, somebody he knows from TikTok who has a Spotify account, right? And he has like fifteen million monthly listeners on the Spotify account, and all okay. his music are like fifteen second clips. They're all TikTok sounds and that's all on spotify right so you have shit like that too and then you have people that are like legitimately finding people that are finding ways to uh yeah artificially like boost listeners by i don't remember what the technique is but this is a lot of fucking worthless trash that's on spotify and streaming in general that i mean is just they're taking up space Right, I guess. Right. So, I mean, there's a lot of different factors, I feel like. And, I mean, I don't know. So, I guess that's kind of why I said, like, metal is separate from this, in my opinion. Yeah. But I don't know that, again, I, let me just use an example of a band that, like, all of a sudden, uh, even though I knew about them, mm-hmm. and you told me about them, you know, and, you know, they weren't huge. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, it's like the zeitgeist or some something sure. said, you know what? Slaughter to prevail. Oh you know? yeah, they've and, been and, around and, for. A, they've yeah. been around for a really long yeah. time, and so that's why I want to give them that. But it seemed like uh, not organic for some well, reason. Because, like, again, you, you know, obviously I we're in a little bit of a bu- bubble. I right? absolutely so don't believe, at least as to. far as like metal, just in general. I was mm-hmm. to say in general, but like, like even more uh, niche genres: deathcore, death metal, right. underground stuff, extreme. I don't believe that there's any kind. I don't believe in industry plants. Uh, people in the industry say there aren't industry plants, which obviously that's what they're going to say. But <laughs> I mean, I don't believe that that's a thing, at least for in terms of metal. But but people do know people, right? Anytime, dude. Anything Pitlord, dude. Anything cool Pitlord has done, right? Was not the result of a cold email to somebody. Hmm. It was we knew somebody who introduced us to somebody else no, and that guy was like you guys are cool let's do this together and then it just it waterfalls and slaughter right. to prevail toured with cannibal corpse yeah. that's why they blew up they were on a huge fucking tour. well i also think they do social media better than most probably metal. yeah like, i mean that's I, I that, say like that goes into it i'm sure that's 90%. probably what they built <laughs> like but i mean i've been hearing by about the way, uh i want to i want to say too uh even with taylor swift those people work really fucking hard. Yeah. They outwork everybody. Yeah. And maybe Slaughter to Prevail outwork. I have. No, dude, I have dude, really listen, ass listen I did. I just did two yeah. uh, weekend runs nice. in March. Sounds like you did get the runs on one of those. <laughs> oh, oh, man. <laughs> uh, we can talk I did about two. That. And, and the amount of work for yeah. just like, uh, you know, a three or four day run. Yeah. You know, I can't, like, the and then I have uh, my friend Alex who plays in guitar <clears throat> plays guitar in H and Entities who we're also on tour with. Yeah. He's he's a professional stagehand and he does he's built stage shows for Taylor Swift. Nice and uh, Romstein. He's Romstein is the biggest show he ever worked. Oh, one hundred percent. Look at the um, they have. until Taylor Swift. I was gonna say yeah. or no, it's one or the other because one, Taylor Swift has like legit. Uh, like, I'm gonna say like a, what is it? it's. I can't. It's like twenty 70, million dollars. Seventy-eight semi trucks. Right, but it was like twenty million dollars or something just to have a sh- like the set or I some crazy shit. Dude, tell me what twenty million right. uh, or, or tell me what seventy-eight to eighty. One of them was bigger. Rammstein had like eighty-three right. semi trucks full of shit, and Taylor Swift was, one was bigger than the other. I don't remember, but uh, I mean, wasn't it, it Metallica that was 
close to them or something like I don't that. Even like think Metallica, I don't even think Metallica was anywhere. Probably not. I wouldn't be surprised if both of those shows were bigger because Rammstein has more shit going on live yeah. than Metallica and Taylor Swift is bigger than both. Yeah. So I, it's it's hard to say. But that's, I mean, and to be one of those artists, you know, it's it's not always the same as just, you know, I, you don't just walk on stage right. and bang. There's a lot of shit that has to be done around that right. that moment. You know, there's a lot of fucking work and like, like, uh, I mean, t- to me, like, it'd be weird to be on such a huge show and not know where like my guitars were, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. somebody else is some techs handling that that's yeah. soft somewhere. I'm like, I'd be like, what the fuck? What do I do? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's, that's weird that enough. Probably one of your shit bag friends. Yeah. You're like, God damn it. <laughs> Motherfucker probably eat cheese, <laughs> cheese puffs and it's all over my fucking guitar. But like, I mean, is, then as far as streaming is streaming is still, people are still trying to figure that out. They don't even like <clears throat> streaming TV and like media. They don't even report those numbers. So it was like a two, two part problem because uh, the, the other problem is it's not a problem. Uh, people are just better. At algorithms in general, people I mean, figure it out, and yeah. then they get into a band. Yeah, some people don't even have a band; they're just literally putting out music, and yeah. they just understand the algorithm more. Yeah, and so their songs that are just whatever sure. easy techno, what it doesn't matter, it will become number one because they knew they knew how to influence uh, these new social I mean, social pl- uh, platforms. Sure, I would also <clears throat> argue that those that. I mean, uh, let's say nine out of ten of those musicians, those like Instagram slash just studio musicians, are yeah. probably not like metal guys necessarily, no. and they're probably not writing like brutal death metal. No. Some of them are, but not all of them. And majority of them are writing stuff that's far more accessible. Right, and know? that that comes back to the the main point, which is that metal is more authentic. Yeah. Because if sure. and again and and. Maybe again. I, I'm, I'm not really into slaughtered prevail. No, I'm sorry. No, it's I, I, I think it's cool uh, that boring. something can get that big though. That sure. that sounds at least decent. Yeah. But uh, to me, you know, and I'm not knocking them. They're doing way more than I've ever done. Totally. But I just look at it like, wow, that's kind of weird. That's the only reason why I brought it up. I was like, why does it just like they're, now they're on a huge ass tour? I think they're with Gojira. Could be wrong. Oh, yeah, they're they've and they're they're doing whatever like, they want what? at this point. I mean, Damn. it's they've got a lot. There's a lot. Uh, you could point at with that band, in my opinion. You could look at just even something like the logo. Yeah. Um. The 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 whole mask thing. You know, yep. the singer wearing a mask, and then they they did a really good job and he's of promoting also jacked him. As fuck. Yeah. He's not. He's ugly. he's like a. But he's Russian. He's right? kind of a character. Yeah. Yeah. They they yeah. are a Russian band. So we can't support that. We're. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, nobody gives a fuck. Doesn't matter. Um. But like. Uh, there's a, it is funny. There's been a lot of like more that's underground Russian bands and like music. Belarusian yeah. bands that that's were like getting shit music. on. Right. That's <laughs> what makes metal music more authentic. Look at the people that were like, listen, I know that there's like a fucking war and shit, yeah. and we're like people are dying. Yeah. And we're American. We're not. Sp- uh, I like their fucking shit. Yeah. Yeah. I, Who gives a fuck? I mean, if there was a Russian Taylor Swift right now, we don't know about it. That's they, what I'm telling you. They were one of. They were one of those. Well, kind of the first bands where I was finally like, yeah, it's not shit that I'm into. You would think if right. you were outside of my world, you would think that that totally be something I like. But I mean, uh, subjectively, it's not. It's really not. And I, I've never really cared for just their sound in general. It's kind of boring to me. That's it. I, I'm 100% I agree, and I'll tell, agree I'll why you, I, I understand why people like it. But it's, I will specifically tell you why I don't like their sound. It sounds too goddamn good. <sighs> so when I say that, yeah. I mean like their actual albums are engineered mixed. way too good, mixed way too good, in a sense that there's no imperfection. It just sounds. And then the voice, you know, I gotta put a bunch of videos of me. This is how I actually sing that low. <laughs> yeah. Like a lot of those things, I just feel like, man, I would have thought of that when I was. Yeah, it, the, thirteen, and I just started music. His, his uh, the him, yeah. his popularity due to his voice to me is like, okay, all of y'all yeah. have only just started listening to death metal. Right, you're only you know fourteen. I understand, but that shit yeah. has been done. Right, and there is nothing amazing about that guy's voice to me. He's got a lot of range. He fucking like hurl his fucking voice. Right. But I, that is something that a lot of other people have been able to do. It's nothing and, new. That Some of those it doesn't matter to also, newer generations. It, does, it doesn't. But also, new generation. <clears throat> some guys play guitar while doing that. Yeah, yeah, and and, and bass. Mm-hmm. And they play 
riffs I could never play. Yeah, ever. same. Same. So I guess my point is like, especially with death metal and, and metal and, and music in general. Uh, yeah, there might be a nefarious thing happening. Uh, a lot of mm. people are coming out, and even Maybe. in the metal community, I'm and saying sure there something's is. padded, it's just, something's it's going not, on. Somebody got chose. Blah, it blah, doesn't blah. Now, matter. But it, it, in the scheme of things, it really doesn't matter. Yeah. You have to do. Yeah. So that's simple. And it's, if you don't, it's just you, you're not it, even it's a part of the game. Literally, all I mean, if even if if that is true. It just proves, it just means that you have to work twice as hard. And in most cases, people are not even working as hard as they should be. In the exactly. To, at all. So, you know, it's and, just. And to play devil's advocate. Yeah. Hypothetically, mm-hmm. you find out that Pit Lord's streams should be 100,000 more people than it actually is. Because social media conspired because you talk about meat. Right? Hold on. I don't want to get political because we don't. But what happens if somebody who has a lot of influence, which there are a lot of people with a lot of influence in this game, say, those guys promote grilling. Screw that. Let's downplay what they actually have. That is what I'm talking about. So if that were to happen and you know about it, because there's a lot of there's a lot of people actually suing for this, by the way. That's the reason why I'm bringing it up. Uh And they're going to win because there's evidence that that's that's the truth politically. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Uh, it's very much like um, we know the rules now. I, kn- I don't know if you know the rules. I know the rules more about YouTube <clears throat> than I ever needed to ever know. Right. <laughs> but the reason why we're always going to have a certain amount of people and, and never be monetized is because we say fuck within the first 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah. That's probably plenty <laughs> of reasons. It's not just fuck. You can say ass shit. I mean, I, I would doubt it's just that. I mean, it's oh, just, no, I'm silly. just saying in general, sure. that's the first rule, <laughs> first rule <laughs> yeah. within mm-hmm. the first 10 seconds. Don't say fuck. Yeah. Always. We screw that up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's usually the first thing we say. <laughs> right? So, so and, um, some people can't speak without saying that <laughs> you might not be here, but we love them. Anyway, the point is, is like, yeah, there's rules and you have to actually abide by them or you don't like we don't. Right. And those 67 subscribers we have. Thank you. Those are real people is what I'm getting. at. I, yeah, I hope so. Those are real motherfuckers that are going to stick with us for, you know, however long. <laughs> really? I mean, I'd be more encouraged if I saw at least 60 views on every single video. But and we do. We do, do we? get that. Yeah. 60, 60 views, which mm. means that. It's consistently 60 people are watching this. And uh, I think we kind of know who the 60 are. <laughs> One or two of them might have watched it over and over. Love you, Kimball. <laughs> <laughs> but wow. no, that's the point. Is like I actually feel better knowing that that's the amount of people we know that will watch this. Yeah, because I mean. I don't, most of those people probably have their own podcast. It's, it's Everybody really, podcast. it is easy to get kind of bogged down and being like, why would we not have. Why don't we have a thousand? Why don't we have? 20, oh man! Yeah. But then, like you know, because we've been doing Pitler has been doing TikTok thing now since like au- last August, and yeah. you know, um, that's that's a fun algorithm to navigate because it just changes, like right, you know, as and then it might get banned. <laughs> you know, I, I, mean, like, I don't even worry about so that. If it gets things. banned, it gets banned. There'll be something else, right? Um, and I don't have any emotional attachment to TikTok for sure. Pit but talk, like, <laughs> and I'll be Pit Lords. TikTok. But, uh, you know, I'll, we'll post stuff and I'll post something I think is, you know, going to perform fairly well. And it gets yeah. like, you know, over the course of two days, like 300 or 400 views. And, right. I'll just, and I'll sit there and go, what the fuck? You know, like, what do I need to do? I know a handful of things I need to do and I'm working on, but it's like some other things where I go, I just don't understand. But then, you know, we'll go to a show and, and, and we've had, you know, the last two runs, we had people come up and be like, guys, is like TikTok content's really good and so good. I'm just thinking like, it just doesn't feel like that many people watch it. But then when you go out right. and you run into people and that's kind of one of the few things they can mention yeah. and it reveals how many people are actually like at least paying attention and go, ah, okay. So it is still worth it Yes, just because it's not taken off and chasing vi- virality is such a, such a disease all the time. You can't mm-hmm. constantly do that. It's just like, we're just doing this to promote the band and do, you know, maybe do funny stuff in between that's relevant. Um, and I was surprised. I was surprised at how many people came up to me and mentioned it. Even like people in other bands, like we're trying to figure out how to do it. And like, you guys do it so well. I'm just like, I didn't think we were, 
But <laughs> I mean, cool, awesome, good to know. Yeah. That works for me. Oh, uh, so it's just like it just just you just bust your ass at least as close as you can to busting your ass and stop worrying about people getting hanged stuff because there's people being handed shit right. all the time. Mm-hmm. You know, like especially now there are more. I feel like there are more festivals for metal throughout the year than ever before. Yeah. And everybody's like, you know, I'll have people come up to me and Dan and be like, well, how'd you guys get on full terror assault? Like right. I've emailed this person and that person and, and now I'm going to response. And mm. you know, the answer almost always is, well, first off we knew a guy, right? So there right. is really your answer because mm-hmm. once you're in, then you're, then you, once you get booked on FTA, if you didn't absolutely just like suck or get kicked out or do something stupid, there's a chance you could be asked back. So, right. you know, right. that's, hence we've been, been able to do it twice. Yeah. And that's amazing. That is awesome. Um, but also, like, I just, I, I'll be like, congratulations, Xenospawn. You yeah. guys are on Yeah, that's, that's a really, it's a really cool year. They're also too. playing with Cryptopsy again. That'll yeah. be the second and, time Derek yeah, played with Cryptopsy. Wildwood. That's fucking cool. A. Yeah. Can't wait to not go. We got asked to do that show, and I was just like, <laughs> <sighs> we already have too many shows in town booked already. Oh, he's still, still this year. Still this year. Basic. Well, like I, we, you know, we played a show a few weeks ago in town in between our two runs Yeah, in rock Island. And, uh, it was funny because it was like the first show in a while where there weren't a bunch of people there to see us. They were, it was people nice. there to see every other band nice. except us. Which is fine. I mean, you're gonna cool. remind me the but the bands because I, I it was um, Empty Graves, who's from around here. It was uh, uh, Doppelganger. It was their first show back in a while. Sweet. How and, how did they do? Uh, I know. Pretty sweet. They're guys. always good. They've got a. Well, they've got this. Guys. They've got I this know new. Sorry. No, Chris he... Dietz isn't even in the band anymore. Oh, they've no got shit. a different drummer. Yeah, oh. it's been it's been some years. Chris Dietz, uh really showing that I don't know anything about double. Yeah, right yeah, now. yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, you I, you might not know what's going on in well, town. Alex, whatever, uh, is a guitar player and he's phenomenal. Alex and I've Coates, never met yeah. him. Uh, I think yeah, I've seen him cool. around town though. They're really a lot, cool. Yeah, he's so. super. He's a nice guy you'll ever talk to. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, everybody was there to see every other band and yeah. and like. We ha- it's it's it was you know one of those humbling moments where you're like oh right we're remember we're not the most popular band in town we're, oh. we're we we do all right yeah we we always do all right and all people do come to see us there were like a handful of people there um to see us uh but yeah. it was like yeah remember that like you know you're you're not always the most popular band. Yeah. And in fact, I think there was a there was a huge group of people that had never heard of us. Yeah. Which again is another thing where you go, yes, remember, not everybody in town has heard of you also. Oh yeah. So so don't react like you're confused when they haven't heard of you. Well, the you other know? thing is that you're traveling and you guys are actually doing like outside shows. Yeah. But you also you you also feel that too. It felt yeah, that was you know? t- I was me and Dan were talking about that. I was like, you know, and it was after that show, I was like, we have entered into a new stage right. of our career as a band, and, and we are, you know, um, building a, a rapport with people in the region rather than just in town. So when we play in town, sometimes it's a little bit... Because also, we've been lucky that when we do play out of town, yeah. there are almost always people that come out that have heard of us, right. that aren't just friends of ours. You know, it's people that are like, oh, I've been waiting to see you guys for, you know, three years. Right. Some guy that had been following us since, like, the very first album that's seen us just this past run. That's, that's dope. And it was super cool. Yeah, he bought a bunch of shit. He he, he was he was a super nice guy. Like, we met a lot of people. It would have like been that. funny if he was like, man, I'm so fucking disappointed. <laughs> you guys are actually not very good. <laughs> wow. Following uh, you for three years. I'm going to leave you all this stuff yeah. that I bought. <laughs> Listen, I just have a lot of money. I'm going to buy a shit. <laughs> but fuck. I don't know. Get uh, Maybe get seven string yeah. <laughs> Like, uh, so, man, I don't, I don't know. I just like, and, and then, uh, on to, to build on the streaming thing, like after the second run, yeah, I was looking at like our Spotify numbers and they didn't nearly, they didn't go up nearly like I expected. Right. You know, you got to check it a handful of days after, mm-hmm. you know, at least 24 hours, uh, is it reports every 24 hours, I think is how that works. And, um, yeah, I was like, man, it's like still the same as it was. 
And again, it's another thing. You just can't keep looking at those fucking numbers and worrying about it so much. Right. Just worry about the thing, the task at hand. Right. You know, not always just analytics and numbers. It's fucking annoying, and it will drive you insane. Well, the main thing people need to hear, too, is like, guys, 90% of what happens in a band, you do not you do not see. 100%. And if that band is successful, you didn't see 90% of yeah. the reason why they are. Yeah. Are they just responsible as humans? Uh, a lot of them that, that are the bands that we love, uh, growing up especially, and, you know, they obviously went through different eras. Now we're in this internet. Yeah. Dude. Now you have people we using have use AI. AI to, people yeah. using AI to write riffs. That's going to be something that we're going to have to na- navigate as well. But I don't think in in the metal community. I could be wrong. I, I maybe, mean, I think- maybe like uh, like for me, I, I've admitted to this. I've had uh, some some moments where I was like, so I have the concept for something that I think's original. I'll put it into uh, like ChatGPT. Yeah, and then I'll say like, write me some lyrics and you know see what this like sounds mm-hmm. like and you know. Just in a lyrical form, sure. Because I have the concept, but I and usually it's all science. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. guys. Um, you know, death metal is all stupid science <laughs> bullshit. Because a lot of people are like, "Who gives a fuck?" <laughs> but, uh, you know, I get it, it, this. You know, whatever this concept, and it's kind of a tool right now. But what we're to, you know, it, it, you could have a, a an entirely written uh, death metal album. I don't think so, but maybe a pop album because I've kind of heard it. Like, they'll say, write this in the style of uh, Taylor Swift. Let's yeah. keep, keep picking on her. Yeah. And and then you listen to it, and you're like, oh, shit. Like, it can make a song, and it actually sounds like kind of what that person would do. Because uh, it's basic, you know? It's not- yeah, I mean, people are definitely going to... People are going to use it by in secret and uh, yeah. get away with it. Um, I, I feel like if, in using it, using it as a tool for songwriting, to me, it would make sense to use it as like a proofreading device. Maybe like it yeah. reads the lyrics that you've already written and goes, put this here, put this there, switch these around, something like that, you know? Oh, I, and to get back on that, when I did that, I, I didn't like anything it did. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, this is stupid. Yeah, it's probably weird. Uh, it probably no, and and it was like, wait, I, so... What are they called? Uh, uh, like key terms or whatever that they yeah. call it in it. Uh, you have to make sure that that's like, like precise prompts. to what your th- prompts. Uh, and then my prompts probably weren't good because yeah. I put like do it in the style of Pantera and Meshuga yeah. or something like that. And it was just like I mean, you feel know, the strength in me <laughs> and the I, chaos I think here. Like AI, <laughs> AI will be. I don't know. Like so many people are afraid of it, and and I as be like, it's going to take away jobs. I'm like, well, yeah. okay. If you went to art school and all you're doing is, um, designing logos for people, right? Well, at least you're still an artist. True. You can still do shit like that. You're probably not going to get a lot of work <laughs> in advertising anymore. But exactly. maybe be a real artist. I don't know. You know, yeah, <laughs> like no, maybe that, maybe that's try to thing. start. I think- Maybe do something else. It's not like that's all you can do. AI becomes, you know, as you know, I still think there's going to be a massive amount of people that don't even give a shit because there, sure. there still is with everything yeah. that we think is popular, and then we're like, no, the masses don't give a fuck right. at all. So maybe, maybe if it does become that popular, that someone can say, or again, it does keep improving. So. If you if you are a, a movie buff like you are, and you go, I want to write this movie that I want to see right now, which a lot of people would like to do, and it's yeah. that simple that you can just come I mean, up with a concept. I thought about it, that. Go, it'd be pretty weird. They're doing that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I, so if the, if that happens, and then it becomes into music, and you're like, oh well, shit. Yeah. You it's know, pr- I know. I actually know how to play this, and I can describe it to an AI. Like, hey, yeah, I don't even know. It's just, it's using, using we're just AI, going into dark, weird using waters. AI yeah. to make, to, for like, as a, just to make things creatively for what you're doing as a creative endeavor, I guess. So, so yeah. you're an artist who's trying to sell art, you're a musician who wants to sell their music. I, yeah, there's, that's, there's a conversation to be had there. Um, because how far does how far before that is that stops being a tool and starts just becoming a replacement for you and you're just 
you know, using prompts and just having this thing do the work. Yeah. You know, um, and I think there's, there's, it's, it's going to boil down to people being honorable or not. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe things will change and you, those tools won't be like the, the advanced versions of those tools won't be as accessible. I would yeah. hope that that's the case and that, you know, Joe Blow, who wants to write an album in his bedroom, can't just, you know, pay a monthly subscription to the software and fucking pump it full of prompts and just spit out an album. I hope that doesn't happen. And there is basic forms of that, like fiber. So say, for instance, me, yeah. you know, I was like, oh, I got this album I want to do, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to get this drummer that's uh, yeah. badass. He's going to send me some raw tracks, and he's going to change my grooves. Yeah, that's, right? I mean. Which I've I, only done one song so far, and it was really, that, really not, um, it was super painless. If you wanted Super to, easy. That's, that's definitely goes into the discussion, I think. Like, yeah. I even, I could even go further and think, like, I feel, the way I feel about, like, like say, like, metal bands who tour and majority of the band, 90% of the band, four out of the five members are touring musicians who yeah. aren't, like, literally part of the band. Or it's one guy, it's a vocalist and a drummer, and then a bunch of touring musicians, you know, the, to me, for me, that's not as cool. That's not as special. That's okay. that's people. That's somebody going. So nobody go to Pit Lord because they they don't have a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, like, but I'm, I'm talking about like the specific the, the people who wrote the music, right? Right. Um, and sure, most of those situations are like the the guitarist or that that vocalist and the drummer write and record everything themselves, and they can play everything. Yeah. And, and you know, at what point? What, yeah, at what point does it make sense for them to just have like solid members in the band yeah. that are just there forever cuz you know only two people need to do stuff. It's still weird to me. It's just not as special as the idea that all those people up on stage know each other really well to yeah. to an extent where they are writing they've written all that music together, you know, like yes. like yeah, me and Dan don't have a drummer, but everything that we write is written together. He is a drummer and, though. So he understands the layers. So we're talking about layers. I always call it layers uh, that make a band original. Uh, There's always like, okay, well, it's easy. Bass is a layer. Guitars on one side is a layer. Guitars on the other side is a layer, right? So you could have a a harmony, right? Right. And then you got a layer probably in the middle sometimes with guitar. I don't know. But then you got a layer of vocal. So you have two vocal different styles yeah. in the band. Yeah, you're just then explaining you how music of, is built. <laughs> yeah. And the layer of drums. But people don't understand this. Like sure. so like when I explain this to people um that are super laymen, they don't really give a shit. And I try to explain why they liked Van Halen. Yeah. It's because there's so many layers happening literally within the recording, but also that's what makes them original. That's what literally makes the sound, right? So yeah. if we get to the basics of it. The originality of layers. So say, for instance, your original, well, what you were talking about was having one or two members, which is what you guys do. You don't have as many layers, but you guys are also guitar players. You can play bass as well. Mm -hmm. And he's a drummer. You might not be the drummer, but... Generally, I, I assume he sets the groove in his head. Because I mean, he's a yeah, drummer. like uh, as far as actually like the writing, it's like he writes, he'll write the guitars and the drums right. and kind of mush them together. And then we hang around and listen to him. And right. I mean, honestly, most of the time what he does is I go, that's that's cool. I because he knows that. how to play, like he, he plays drums. Mm-hmm. So he's like, this is what a drummer would do. Yeah. And this is going to be logical. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would. I would definitely assume that he writes what he would, what he would do. Right. It's hard to say at this point. That may have changed by now. We've been doing it for so long. You know, he yeah. might have a different mindset. But I mean, yeah. I mean, for sure, we 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 do kind of have our own assigned layers to it. But even outside of the music, what makes your your band original is the other layer, which is comedic. Yeah. So that's another layer. Yeah, I hate I hate that that is one. I mean, that's I mean, but that's how I want it. <laughs> how <laughs> like, is it not? I don't know. I mean, okay. it is. I didn't it, know you yeah. hate that. Well, yeah, I mean, let's get into that. Why? Well, I just it's not that I hate it. Okay. I shouldn't say it like that. It's it's I don't want it to be as much of a focus. I I've always because there have been plenty of bands over the years that have been that have had a a sense of humor. That's what I want. I want it to be a sense of humor. I don't want it 
I don't want us to be considered like a joke band. Right. You know, we're just here to make jokes and make fun of death oh, okay. metal. No, I see. What you you know what I mean? It's. It's, there is real music, but it's, it's but you our also attitude. Not feel bad about that because no, I, I don't feel bad. You it's, also have other like bands that are like serious, like totally, Obsidian. Yeah, Hammer's yeah, but Obsidian Hammer is pretty serious. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. Um, is, that, is that still a thing? Yeah, okay. yeah, it's still going. So, um, looks like you got. Yeah, uh, we have a show, right? May seventeenth. Okay. Right. Rascals Moline. Um, <laughs> it, it's I don't I just don't want it to be as much of a focus. I my my blueprint. Yeah. For our attitude as a band was always Strapping Young Lad. Oh, okay. And not just Devin Townsend, but Strapping Young Lad as yeah. a whole. Like, it is fun. It There is some serious music. Yeah. Um, But you can't, you cannot take it too serious. It doesn't allow you to take it too serious, right. despite the fact, I mean, Alien is one of the heaviest fucking albums that exist. And it has, and, and some of the things that he says under that shit right. is just like, oh, what in God's name are you talking about? Well, I mean, it's, you know, it's, you can't play it on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, I, I, I've always wanted that. I didn't want, and, and we've definitely gone off the edge a handful of times and yeah. some silliness, but I want, I don't want it to be distracting. That's what it is. Whereas like Weird Al, right? I grew yeah. up listening to Weird Al, and really what I did was I grew up listening to 80s music, but it was in the guise of Weird Al. It was all the songs he was making fun of. I I yeah. learned about Michael Jackson through Weird Al. I learned about so many mainstream, uh, you know, break uh, groundbreaking artists through fucking Weird Al. Yeah. Um, but... At some point, I couldn't just listen to him as music. I did when I was like nine, yeah. but then as I got older and I started to need re- like music, music, mm-hmm. like the comedy aspect of that it was too distracting. Yeah, you know that's why I don't just sit and listen to Weird Al now, even though I still enjoy a lot of that. Um, and that's always what I didn't want to do. You know, I because I think I think to an extent that yeah, but we're we're Al, and again, I get I get your point. I, I it's probably saying. not the best comparison because, because he is parody and going, we're not parody. <laughs> and, yeah, totally. But it's so it's, like, it, to me the, it's a parallel. To it is more. a parallel. I, I see like most people because most people don't listen to metal. Sure, and they're going to go like I don't see any jokes in this whatsoever. Oh uh, yeah, that's <laughs> and that's that's good. That's that's I mean to me so that's a, that's safe. a step I in the right direction. The thing was that you don't want to be comedic. I, a comedic, you're safe. It's just if they see like a, a video of you guys, you're mm-hmm. being you're being silly boys. Which that's and that's fine. You're silly because gooses. because that because our because it's it is also important to me yeah. that people know that the reason we are making jokes is because that's how we are. But there's, because that's what you're it's authentic to, to also us. in your soul is you yeah. do need a serious band. Yes, like in your life always, and that's why you're Obsidian 100%. Hammer 100. Yep. Mm-hmm. percent uh, Is there anything else? Still, right not now, at the current, moment. current, not at the moment. Maybe Dark Rift if that we is, kill like, Jake. Because yeah. Forge Master, <laughs> Forge Master was getting ready to record a new album, yeah. And I was just kind of like, yeah, I'm not gonna have time, you know, okay. to to do it. So I kind of bowed out of that. And so I don't really have anything else extra. And by the way, that's not on. mean. What he said, I don't have time. Right? No, 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 no. Some I was people, straight some up. I was like, heard that, and they were like, "Oh, oh it's kind yeah, of yeah." Well, really, no, they he's had fucking busy. They had sent like, me, yeah. Um, he had sent me songs, and it was sounded really cool. It was actually sounded way cooler than the stuff before. And I was nice. He sent it to me, and I was amped to do it. Yeah. And then you know, I started doing the logo thing. I still have work to finish with that with some of those people. Um, Pit Lord's been just infinitely more busy. Uh, Obsidian Hammer is is always there doing right. stuff. So I was like, you know, last time I almost didn't get it done when yeah. I recorded for him, and I did it at home on my own, which was very difficult. I I hate recording uh, on my own. It's fucking annoying. Um, I've grown to dislike recording just in general more and more over the years. Oh, yeah. I don't know why, but. I think I know why. But uh, it sucks and it's meticulous. It's really annoying. But um, there are aspects of really recording the last Pit Lord EP was the probably the most fun we'd had. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, it, and your again, your band is becoming more 
Like, and I don't even say it because you, you guys are always professional. Yeah. I don't want to yeah, use that My father-in-law word, said, you like, guys are trending. Literally, like, <laughs> it's like you're where? professional <laughs> musicians, but like, you're having fun. Yeah. So like, if, uh, and I don't want to bring it in, but if there was a Shook project, every time we did something, mm-hmm. it was fun. It was. Right? But it wasn't was, necessarily professional. No. Because you drank a whole fucking bottle of wine. There wasn't any professionalism going on there at all. But And I'm I'm tackling with that, you know, I uh, myself, I'm I you know, I, I'm an introspect as well, because I think a lot of people don't know how to do that, by the way. Uh, human beings don't know how to look inside themselves and be like, that's probably not good. Yeah, I would think most but, people probably just don't do it at all. Uh, yeah. At all. Yeah. Which I think, like, to I me, it's like, it this, that's how you early. grow. Yeah. You go like, hey, man, honestly, like, that doesn't sound good. Yeah. If you're playing guitar, yeah. how about in real life? In oh, your life. Dude. If you're like, you know oh. what? Maybe I don't drive great because I, my eyes suck. I was, I mean, <laughs> all the last two yeah. runs we did, one of the new songs we've been playing, uh, or Actually, we we only we don't we were only playing it on the last run. Yeah. Uh, anyways, it was me going. Fuck! I don't practice enough. I've not been <laughs> practicing enough. Like, every, I mean, honestly, ninety nine percent of my live show was just fine. I want to put there was somebody out right now. Song. Just said the exact same there was, sentence. There was text. Really? <laughs> <laughs> There was one song where every time I'd come to this one section, mm-hmm. I'm like, just focus on doing the vocals right. Don't worry about the riff because because Dan's playing it right. Right. They can't hear that you cannot fucking play that and sing at the same time yet. Because we, we started learning some of the new songs because we have to right. relearn these new songs. And we started like three or four weeks before we went out on tour with one of them. And I was like, God damn. damn. Uh, it's not a lot of time. And yeah, there's a lot of work and we definitely need to kind of adjust how we write when we write what and when we record right. it and how well we know when we, we know it when we start playing it. Um, yeah. it's, it's a weird thing cause we do everything so backwards, but, um, yeah, a lot of that, a lot of me going in my head, fuck man. Fuck, you've been so fucking lazy. <laughs> you, you you do way too much shit. You need to sit down and practice. Yep. Luckily, like Emily's getting a different job, so she's not gonna have a home office anymore. So we're gonna have like a an actual like music room. Oh, nice. In our nice. second bedroom. Yeah, so Sweet that's deal. gonna be cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But but yeah, no, totally like like definitely pay attention to what's going on in your own head, because that's usually where you're gonna find the best. With everything. Uh, <laughs> you know, in life, um, which is a part of the title. Uh, you can also look at not thinking that you, again, you are going out to uh, stop comparing your yeah. shit to other people. Right. Stop it. Unless, unless it's what is literally you go is the thief of joy. I think so. That sounds right. What they say. Like, unless you are going, Hey, I want right. to do that. Yeah. How do I do that? And you mm. go up to that person and you go, how did you do that? Because I want to do the same thing. Unless uh, you're literally. Yeah, uh, some, some people are annoying when they do that. So, like, well, eh. that sucks. Sucks. But, yeah. but sometimes you're the only person there that's going to be able to tell them. That's true. Like, like I mean, it, you know, we get asked about our, our light setup. We get asked about how we do things all the time. You know how many fucking times I've had to explain how we do things? But yeah. it's to people who want to know and yeah. want to do it. And, yeah. and the way we do things live in the studio is not. A secret it's not like our secret sauce it's just how we figured out how to do it right and it would work well for some people who don't do similar things that we do so yeah so share fucking knowledge you mm. know and uh that help everybody else because we're not in competition right i you, some people can make the argument that that there is slightly competition for attention now because competition isn't bad no well, like, right. Uh, uh, you have we, to stick you know, out <laughs> again. Like we, you're talking about when I'm. I always have to talk about when I was active uh, with music. I think we always looked at each other, and I don't. You know, I don't know if you felt the same vibe when you were in that earlier on. But I would be like, we're the best oh, ever. Yeah, like, there has to be I still ego. know people that do that. I'm the best, and we're gonna kill things. You I know? like just, yeah. just you know, just I just to pump ourselves up. Yeah, I didn't really. Like in my head, I did believe that at the time because I was yeah. a young buck. Sure, but like now, oh, don't worry. I know forty-five year olds that do that. 
<laughs> on a daily basis. I'm Trust not me. there yet. I, hope I, I know. I know. I just some, seen some gray in my beard. I know motherfuckers <laughs> that are that are ten years older than we are oh, that still shit. say that same shit, and it ain't true. Mm. Um, that nobody, any of you know. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> it's happening though. Like, and and, yeah. and for us, uh, especially you know, just to speak on Dark Rip a little bit, I, I, I'm obviously hoping next weekend we are gonna do a jam, right? Um, that's up to a lot of factors, right? Because we are all well, well it's a, it's it's it would be four people, right? Yeah, all four people have a bunch of shit going on, right? It is so and hard to round four people up sometimes. God, so with the two, you know, of you, yeah, a lot easier, right? <laughs> I, that's my favorite question. That's and my favorite question. It's the number one question people ask us all yeah. the time. Or or statement logo. Mm. It, it has to be so much easier with just two people. Yeah, and I fucking guarantee you, it is not. Oh, I think it is that. not. Oh, no. It's. I mean, travel wise, sure. Travel wise, yeah. gear wise, but that it has more to do with just the the way we do it. Not so much that it's I just felt two like you're people. Gonna talk shit about Dan Frank real quick. What I do you thought mean? You were gonna be like his farts. <laughs> so fucking bad. Well, okay, so yeah. so I mean, yeah. That's you not know a song by uh, Meshuggah by uh, that's, it's called uh, that's not, Combustion. That isn't not part of it. Um, so like, well, for one, yeah, you know, scheduling, yes, it's way easier. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's all that can also be harder because one of us can legitimately just forget, yeah, because we're both responsible for a large calendar of events, yeah, um, between, between both of our active any of our other active music projects yeah. and then anything else we do, life in general. You know, wife Guys, stuff. They have jobs, jobs and wives, yeah. and yeah, full time jobs for sure, and that we rely on. That we would not be able to do the band if it weren't for those jobs. Exactly, I sure. think a lot of people forget that. Yeah, and um, there's that, and so if one of us forgets, and we double book or right. we do we do something, the whole thing is fucked. Yeah, because that's half the band basically. Mm. So so that that can be easier, can be harder. Um. As far as like travel, the space and everything, getting Airbnbs, that's all super. We can pay for hotels, Airbnbs because right. it's really cheap. It's only two of us. Yeah, you know, Airbnbs mm. especially make that it makes that easy because we can get cheap Airbnbs. But um, even lodging with people, if we got to stay at someone's house, just two nice. people, you yeah. know, it's just like Big Dan got his own bedroom at somebody's house one time. That oh, was fucking shit. rad. Yeah. I got a whole sectional I slept on with a smelly dog and it was amazing. Oh my yeah. goodness. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. But um but then there's the aspect is like when we're on the road, yeah. At least the way things are right now, it's just me and Dan that travel together. Right. We don't take a third person with us. We should, but then we have to pay them and you know, that'll happen later on. But like for right now, it's just me and Dan, and and you. We He's talking been, about the AI drummer. That's gonna be a physical drummer. <laughs> we like haven't been a screen, a, and it's gonna say funny shit. We we haven't <laughs> been on a we haven't been on a tour where I just gave you an idea. That's pretty dope. It's all right. I'm not gonna lie, dude. I'd like to see a screen. And and like AI drummers just fucking ripped his shit. We were gonna have Jake. And he's just eating fucking <laughs> Jake. Worse. Jake shit. from Ancient Entities was going oh, to uh, get up on stage and air drum. Nice. At the, there was a drum. There was one show we played. There was drum sets. Were uh, there was a drum set that was backlined, and Jake was gonna get up and air drum. I mean, you know, he never they, did it because he's a pussy. You know, they actually have air drum, which is like yeah. legitimately. Yeah. Like, you know, just, yeah, I've seen you can sticks. sit it up to your laptop, yep. mm-hmm. and it's. Like you're cool. actually playing. It's pretty dope. And it feels like it would only work for an actual drummer because like you're not going <clears> to <throat> learn to play drums with no uh, impact. If you set up There's the no uh, impact. If you set up the like from what I've seen, mm-hmm. if you think like oh this is my kit, yeah, sure. But if if you're like oh this is a random kit, they're going to be like yeah. Oh, shit, but, the... but anyway, sorry. So like when when we get to venues, yeah, we spend so much time together. Like I'll, I mean, we still we'll still we still hang around each other, but like. We kind of each have our own designated jobs, too. Yeah. You know, like, um, we get to a venue, and once we get everything figured out and we make a plan, I end up, we, we unload, and I build up the merch table and everything, and Dan kind of figures out where gear's going to go. Yeah. And then as I'm kind of, like, you know, uh, working merch or doing whatever, like, he's kind of setting up some of, uh, some of, our, some of our stuff okay. so that it's ready to just get tossed on stage when we go. You know, and so like we we spend enough time apart 
we've we figured out to spend enough time apart that we don't like irritate each other, which I'm sure still happens. <laughs> but but like you know, we're really careful about not like getting in like stupid you know uh, arguments or like you know uh, disagreements over dumb shit. It's it's all about compromising and and making it smooth, you know, because yeah, yeah you're stuck in the, in a car for you six to eight hours with the one of those your madness. <laughs> yeah, occasionally. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you just learn when to take a nap from you learn when to just, just not do anything. So it is easier. It is harder. It's, it's just, it, it, I think maybe with, with two different people, it might not work with right. two different people. It might work way better. It's just me and Dan are, are like the opposite kind of person. And I think yeah. to an extent, that's why it works. I guess there's guys. There's no secret sauce. Like, yeah, not really. It, it, you literally you knew each other since fucking what yeah. kindergarten and uh, ninth grade. Ninth grade. Okay, yeah. that's fucking. I don't know how many years ago. Oh, not so to, it's been a while now. 25, yeah. 20 there years you go, ago. Bob. That's my point. Uh-huh. Uh, there's there's twenty no years secret ago. sauce. Two thousand three. You find the people, and sometimes you don't, and yeah. you have to do it yourself. Or which is fine. Yeah. Or you hire. Or about. you do the dumb thing, and you hire a bunch of people, and then you end up with a band full of people you that. Don't get along, and no, the no, band no, no, makes no. You money. Do the smart thing, people. Go to Fiverr and have people that don't want to be in your band. They just want to record your shit, and then you don't have to deal with See, them at all. That's afterwards. that's the other thing. That's another thing. I'm that's yeah. uh, we, we, we didn't get to talk about that. <laughs> I was, I'm not really a huge fan of that either. Yeah, because I don't. But I, you would do it if you had no other choice because you're a musician. <sighs> Meaning, I, mean, like, I can't record. If there's at home, no I'm terrible. I'm so terrible. I, I, that's that. my point. You don't even I, have to. Uh, Somebody else is going to take your bass riffs, and they're going to mix and master it. Yeah, and then just, you're going to send out your idea, and you're going to say, hey, this is my groove. And then some drummer that you've never met that's in Norway or some yeah, stupid shit. That's not as fun. Amazing. is going that's, to go, by the way, let, we could do this. That's, you know, I, that's a music business hack to me. And I don't. I'm just saying it's doing. Sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, people want to do that. That's way, fine. I'm not way, a fan of that. The layers, I, I'm going to say this. The layers, the layers is what make it original. So say, yeah. for instance, me, when I wanted to do my solo project, mm-hmm. I'm not a drummer. I do understand drums in a lot of ways. I understand like what's a, an original groove and blah, blah, blah. And I've worked with a lot of programs for 10 plus yeah, years, dang. but I'm not a drummer. So what would a drummer do to this? It's always been my fucking you know, thing and I get in my own head and sometimes I just don't end up doing it all. And that's kind of my point. Yeah, instead of just finding a drummer around Exactly. There. Well, and again, there aren't any drummers for oh. what I'm trying to do. Well, I mean, you don't know. I do know. You don't know. I do know. You don't know. Did Post-ID just be- get back together, or Ooh. did they break up? Exactly. Did you say, I didn't... Post-ID. Post-ID, I know yeah. Post-ID. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is there a drummer in that that I should know about? No. Okay. Yeah, there is. There is a drummer in that band. I'm saying you don't so know enough. Do, you don't uh, like know enough about what's going on. Do you don't, like uh, I'm saying Richard you don't. Christie you, at, the, <laughs> at the top. There could be. Okay. You don't we'll know, see. dude. You don't know enough of the musicians around in the area. Know. No, you don't. You absolutely do not. All right. I only just the found only out about. I know that. I only just found out about Fungal Mass. But I mean, the drummer. Yes, the drummer that you would prefer to work with, you can't and won't. And I understand that. No, but that's, like, why, that's why I, there's, I have found drummers. Uh-huh. So the drummer from Amenta, uh, something Stone, yeah. he, he's the guy that I'm fucking trying to work with, okay. which is taking forever because sure. he has a billion people like me right. trying to fucking work yeah. with him. And I'll pay him $100 <laughs> for a song. You fucking get me, guy? You're fucking amazing. A uh, hundred Australian I, dollars. It's probably more than that. I just can't remember. But the point is, like, I send him a shit. And my shit's all fake instruments, you know, yeah. like, hey, this is what right. you know, an eight string guitar uh, uh, program that I'm using. And this is what I want to hear. And then, you know, again, of course, Derek's like, I'll do it, whatever. Sure. And, uh, we're going to start that, but I haven't done that. And then now through th- the monkey wrench, we're going to hopefully do dark riff. I'm like, OK, that sounds even better. Yeah, because that's a legitimate band I can play in. Mm hmm. And we the drummer that you know personally. Yes. And he is obviously again the one pushing it, thank God. Yeah. Which probably means again, I, I don't know his situation, but probably means uh he's gonna join five different bands at the same time. <laughs> you son of a bitch. And it's gonna be some fucking traveling band that's badass. Yeah. Better than Dark Rip, you son of a bitch. A Legion, you cunt. Well, those guys are anyway, so crazy. They're super like, good. Did you ever hear their cover? They do a yes cover. It's they amazing. Cover roundabout. roundabout. 
I only just heard that. I was like, what the that fuck? That was the last thing he recorded with them. Really? Yep. Oh, that's cool. Yep. I didn't know that. Dave Otero. Uh, I did not mastering guy. really talk to anybody in Allegiant when we played with him. Although the singer was laughing about our grill. Okay. Like, he's he's laughing. He's, like, sitting at a table, which I didn't realize that's who it was at the time, because I didn't yeah. really know a Legion very well. But he's like, anything for the show, right? Uh, 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 it all works. Well, what's cool <laughs> is, like, a Legion's coming with a bunch of cool-ass bands to the Forge uh, and Juliet. Uh-huh. And, like, in my head, I'm like, oh, that'd be pretty cool. But I don't know what the the, the end was with, with B Park. As, you know, as much as I talked to him, I've never asked him, so... Oh, uh, I, I, I mean, it sounds like some, everything's copacetic, but yeah, it sounds like he. Legion, if you want to put us on that fucking thing, <laughs> you gotta remember, <laughs> you're gonna get. They don't. Gonna they look, don't. Ch- they you're don't gonna decide look that. Bad. They don't decide that. Dark Rift is too fucking good, they, man. The, a band like Legion's not deciding who the who the local support is on Bro, that thirty five date tour. Probably <laughs> that's Juliet. They're not paying any two attention. Two songs they're gonna give us. Two songs. It was right? hard. It was hard. We're to, gonna make those fuckers forty minutes long. <laughs> they played for like a fucking hour at Wow. Oh, dude, one like, of their songs is like ten minutes. Yeah, bro. like um, like uh, apparently at one point on that tour when I was talking to the guys in Archaic, right. fucking Allegiant played for like two hours on one show. Oh my god, I not, might be wrong I mean, about not, that, it, but not I mean, I B Park's. I remember watching those. He guys. was in like Tyranny Enthroned. They played so- and oh, Allegiant yeah. and our band. What was so the he uh, had, like, what 50 was the Five fucking what was, songs. What was the other band that like the they wore all the armor? A, a Tyrion and Throne, I'm pretty sure. Nah, no, nah, it was a different band. Oh um, shit! They looked like a more serious Guar. It was a. It was like um, wasn't it Tyrion and Throne? No, uh, uh-uh, you no, sure? It's different. I mean, I remember that. I remember hearing that band name, but it was like War something. Oh fuck! Um, Warhammer? <laughs> no, no. Um. I know who Unless you're talking I'm, about, but yeah, I thought it was Tyranny and Throne. It's not Tyranny and Throne. I would have remembered that. It's a different name. They were really cool. They're Tyranny really and Throne's really, really cool. fucking badass. Yeah. Um, and I'd be like, why is he in our band? We fucking suck. But then yeah. that's that's the the thing, man. You the point always, is, like the humble nature. The point is, there are yeah. a lot of really good drummers around the area. They're just, they're just, you know, they're all like 20. They're getting, they're getting to be a lot better. Well, like Everybody in fucking frontal assaults retarded good. I mean, yeah. like Ill Omen, those, those like a fungal mass I just booked on an Obsidian Hammer show. Yeah. Like they're younger, younger dudes that are just <clears throat> shred, yeah. shred. And like the most metal bands this area has ever spit out is happening right now. Well, including say that, but I mean, I'm sure there including was including a pretty you know, with, with, when that, go ahead. So I'm not going to say any kind of thing for sure, <laughs> but but there I I have a I have a bead on a Uh-oh. majorly crazy event that's going to be happening in the region, put on by some local people um, and some regional people. <clears throat> the big thing that's going to be happening in the region, show wise. Um, that's all I'm going to say, but, um, it's going to be really amazing. It's really be put on by the right people. Yes. At the right place okay. at the right time. Mm. And, uh, I think it is, it is now, sort of a, like summer, summertime, uh, late summer, it'll be okay. late summer. Um, mm. uh, I'm not going to say when, where, but, uh, it will be this year. Uh, we are, we're booked to play it. Um, yeah, it's gonna be cool. You it's, think uh, it's, the guys from Dark Rip something... know enough notes to be on that, <laughs> or is just uh, notes? Well, so what do you guys? What are your guys' Spotify monthly <laughs> listeners? Um, I, I need to see that number know. first. <laughs> no. I need to see that number first because oh, ours shit. is still over a thousand for the next week before it starts to drop. So thousand brothers and sisters, <laughs> yeah, rocking. It's pretty Flanders. cool. We're looking at like the top countries. Uh, it's like mm. U.S. and then like Finland Damn. and like Germany. Damn. There's like 40 people listening to us in Finland, like Fucking consistently. Finish it. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> They're like riding, driving rally cars around, listening to Pit Lore. <laughs> Fucking finish it. Like, finish it. Uh, but it. yeah, so that's gonna be really cool. Um, I'm so fucking excited about the just the region. There's so many people that are working, um, to make it. A lot right. better than it's been, dude. I mean, honestly, <clears throat> remember back when we were like younger and you're like John Hopkins was working at uh, Gabe's and I was sitting yep. and was booking cool shows. That's when we saw Gojira and shit. Yep. 
And then it I just only stopped. met him once. I don't think. Sure, he, he, but he's he, not was, he me. was. No, no, he's dead. Oh, is he? Uh, yeah, so he oh, definitely fuck. won't remember you. Okay. Um, I own a few of his records now <laughs> since he mm. passed away. But um, he was the reason so many cool shows were coming to Iowa City back Makes then. Sense. You Makes know, sense. at least like downtown Iowa City. Now yeah. we have Wildwood along with Gabe's, but Gabe's is starting to be taken over by more regional bands. You have bands like Mall right. come down from like South Dakota and play. Um, Joe, who is Nightmare Imagery. On Instagram, he he does all the artwork for like Sangu Sugar Bog and like a lot of uh, uh, tons of bands, but his art yeah. style is fucking nasty. He's the one that did our long sleeves. And that guy knows how to spell that band name? Yeah. Oh, wow. I think he's the one that did their logo. Very I might be wrong. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's at least uh, what, he's, five he's, S's? He's, he's an amazing dude. He's super cool. But um, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's just a lot of people that are really working to do cool stuff in the region. Even when I was down in St. Louis, which St. Louis does not have like a hugely uh, active scene. Yeah. But the bands dude, like we played with this band shout out to fucking extinctionism. Oh, St. Louis. They were fucking like that. Sick. They were so cool. Like, dude, I, we played with so many good bands when we were on, when we were on tour. Um, just like, Dude, Extinctionism from St. Louis, Casketborn from Cincinnati, mm. Scavhag from Cincinnati. I mean, we, we know them already, but uh, Casketborn was nasty. Um, then all the bands we played with in Kentucky. Uh, <laughs> uh oh. Um, no, nah, it's okay. They were cool, but uh, one, of, one of the. I'm not going to get too much into it, but one of the guys. That was while I was sick, too. So, like, when we were out on tour, I got oh, sick. Oh, yeah. I got sick after Cincinnati. That was the runs joke I made earlier. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it was, we were on tour, and we hit Cincinnati, and then the next day I woke up, and I thought I was just hungover, which I probably was to an extent. Oh, yeah, okay. But then I started getting, like, feverish, and we're, like, on the road. You know, I'm complaining about it's cold, and Dan's like, it's not cold. <laughs> it's not cold at all, actually. <laughs> and I was, like, vomiting, and we mm. got to this um, venue in Corbin, Kentucky, Brand new venue. Like yeah. they'd only just uh opened it a few months ago and they they barely had any shows there. Mm. We booked the show like three weeks before it was supposed to happen because I could not find a place and then it was also Good Friday uh. in Kentucky. <laughs> yeah, so right. there was a total of four people that paid to get into the show. And then I was sick and so me and Dan were just like, we're just we just can't play. You know, uh, Lyndon's sick, yeah. half the band is sick. And I was sleeping behind our merch table on a bench. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. I would pop up every time I think I'd hear somebody walk up to the table. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. I'm sick. Um, yeah. We didn't play. But then the next, the rest of St. Louis and Marshalltown, Iowa were fucking really good. But yeah, St. Louis is one of those places where it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a rad town. There's a really cool, we were in the, um, the Grove, which is like a district, it's okay. kind of an artsier district. Yeah, super dope brewery called the the Urban Chestnut that we hung mm. out in for a little bit. Um, the bar was the Platypus, and like everybody we talked to there was fucking cool, and they were all like, "The yeah. bands here are good." There's just not much. There's just not much of a scene. I think there's only one other place to play in St. Louis for like smaller bands, and then that's mm. kind of it. So like, but. The people we booked with were dope. I mean, the the club fed us, which is so rare anymore right. for us. <laughs> like, was, I'm so not used to playing a place where they go, all right, so whenever you guys are ready to eat, we totally got you. You can order right. this, 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 or this. Let us know. Just mm. order it all as a band so it'll make it easier on the kitchen. And we're Hell like, yeah. fucking A, dude. Ah, oh, I was still sick and could barely, like, eat, really. But I was, like, not too sick to play. Yeah, I didn't feel normal until like Tuesday that week. Ooh. Like I was, I was a piece of shit. But it always makes me like just laugh when I I see like old interviews of like Dime making fun of uh, Phil because yeah. he was sick. And he's like, <laughs> even though he's like dead. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, what a fucking pussy. Get a fucking uh, shot in you. Let's go. I <laughs> like, was so <laughs> dude. I was so lucky. I was yeah. so lucky. Everybody there was just so supportive and cool about right. it. Like. Everybody in H H and Entities was like, "Are you yeah. okay, dude? Linda doesn't look good." And and the whole time, like even in Kentucky, I'm still thinking like, I think I'm just hungover, yeah. which felt worse because I was like, I'm a pile of shit because I was stupid last night. Did you try but, to drink again? Um, did I drink? I didn't drink again until St. Louis. I had a beer at the brewery, 
So that was it. You could have. I don't. You, I don't, been, did, you don't. This a was a. This was a. I was unable to hold anything down. Oh, situation. Okay. I was. Yeah. Yeah, so runs, like runs. when I woke up in the morning before we went to St. Louis. Yeah. First thing I did was shit bile. Oh man. Just straight up, just because I I was so dehydrated and uh, shit and puked bile, and then I was it. And I was mm. done. And then, then, then I felt, I started to feel like, you know, we weren't going to have to pull over once an hour to, to vomit. It's not wrestling with music and live without shit and bile. No, no, absolutely not. <laughs> no, I was, I was remember messaging Emily and I was like, I just shit. Probably the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. She's like, it's probably bile. Oh, <laughs> like, so funny. But, like, let me see that. <laughs> yeah. I have well, to know. She's, I mean, she's a recovering alcoholic. She knows what that looks like. She, she I explained it to her. Has, she had another oh, drink. Four, three years, four hey, years. Hey, you're recovered. She's, she's. You know, you're not recovered. You're, oh, no. When you're, you're, you're it's, uh, when you're, <laughs> you're always in recovery. That's just how I it guess. works with that. Um, <laughs> I'm drinking. Yeah. <laughs> As if you would know. Um, but she's, no, she's, she's amazing. She's, oh, oh yeah. It's, it's super hard and she does a really good job. But, oh, yeah. um, it does kind of suck though to having a, an ambitious woman. I'm going to be honest with you. Yeah. Because you're ambitious as well. Mm-hmm. And sometimes that's just going to, Butt heads, you know, like, no, I'm actually doing this. In the, in the, you <laughs> well, know, and so, Emily, let him do it above you. <laughs> she, <laughs> she, she, she's going to cause a fight. <laughs> she's got plenty of stuff. I know, I'm just messing with yeah. you. Alicia's like, I'm going to do this, this, and this. And I'm like, fuck. Yeah. How do I do this stuff? <laughs> and I just go, all right, you're always right. No, Emily's always, she, she's always got something to do, just like I always Yeah, but she's always right. She is. I mean, that's the truth. <laughs> That's not just me being a good husband. That's Even if legit. she wants to murder an entire race, she's <laughs> like, always right. Lyndon. Like the only time I've ever heard her be wrong is how she pronounced necrophagist. Was, <laughs> she, when we first started talking, she said necrophagist. I'm like, oh my what god, what are you talking about? She's like, that's how I've been saying it forever. You're like, I'm about to. And now it's a one. joke. Now it's a running joke. If she says something, I go, you mean, you mean enciferum, not oh, enciferum, no. or some other like band name? But like, well, no. Well, no. I was gonna say we're at the we're at the, we're at the mark. <clears throat> yeah, not the mark of the Quad Cities. We're at the yeah. uh, hour mark. Yeah, if you want to plug over. some shows? Go ahead. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna say some shit real quick. Um, if you have them on, on. Go ahead. Let me pull them up. Let me look. At First and foremost, guys, you are seeing nothing but <laughs> stuff behind me. <laughs> I'm, yeah, you I'm need construct to something. Uh, uh, I knew they see this wall right here. Yeah, uh, we had to literally do an entire construction for that. Uh, thank you, Micah Shivery, my cousin. Um, and we're going to continue to make this into a, uh, not just a spider shed. Uh, we're going to make this into an actual recording slash jamming slash podcast studio is what I'm thinking. Uh, I, I'm not the only person out. You know, you guys know I play guitar very loud. I, I do a bunch of shit out here very loud. But uh, Alicia Marie plays a bunch of instruments as well. And she's like, God, we need some place. Especially, dude. I'm going to let you guys know, saxophone is way louder than Hell, yeah. guitar. Yeah. There's so many frequencies. Uh, I, this did, is probably so boring to people. You should, hear, you right should hear a cello, a, like a fresh cello. cello oh, cello's oh God, loud as on that fuck. Episode. Yeah. <laughs> it's insane. Uh, and so, you know, just, just the amount of things I want to do in this little tight space is what you could do as well. I'm saying that because I think there's a lot of buddies out there in this scene, a.k.a. this place we live we definitely gotta, stuff, we gotta get the front I, of I, see we gotta that, get f- I see a few people uh buddies on facebook say i want to do this isn't it do it man do it yeah and the only re- the only way it's gonna happen is if you say so me i i set up a jam uh hey it might not happen it might you know we all have lives but i want to i want to continue doing uh you know obviously music uh, and, and I'm just going to tell you my main goal for this episode. I'm just going to say my main goal for the summer is to at least play one fucking show. That's all I'm saying. If I can do that, I win. So you guys heard it here. Lyndon, what do you got? Um, okay. And so like in, uh, if April 20th, um, wars pit Lord is in Menominee at Zimmergy brewing. Nice. Uh, with apothic. Is that Zimmergy uh, uh, brewing good? Like they got hell, a lot it's of good stuff. Sick. It's super cool. It's like, a, it's like a Anything brewery. Anything you remember? It's a brew. It? Uh, well they, they brew their, they make their own orange cream. Soda. Oh, it's fucking really good. Yeah. 
Um, but it's a it's a brewery that's in an old car shop, so mm. like a car garage. So they open up the, the glass bay doors on the, in the nice. summer, and it's super nice. Uh, super fun to play, though. We played there before. It's cool. Um, and then May 4th, uh, Pit Lord is in Ann, Ar- or, uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan, Ypsilanti. It's actually Ypsilanti, Michigan, May with Crocophile and Picant. Uh, Picant's getting back together for a show, I think. Shout out to Crocophile. Um, yeah, Crocophile. Uh, the biggest flag I on. own in my my living room. Yeah, they're also uh, doing yeah. the algorithm, getting way yeah. too famous. Yeah. <laughs> Fuckers. They're on Brutal Mind already. Fucking shout out Jordan Molina. I love you, but God nice. damn. Fucking. Um, and then uh, June. So, okay. So then May 17th is Obsidian Hammer at Rascals with Fungal Mass, Gaunt, um, Frontal Assault. That's it. Um, Did you put that on? Yeah. Or, uh, it's okay. me and Ross. Ross booked it. I just. just I kind of Sorry, where was it at? Rascals. Okay. Moline. Um, and then May 7, or sorry, May 24th, so the week after that, uh, Pit Lord's in Iowa City at Gabe's with a band called Selena Plexio, which is really fucking cool. Nice. Uh, June 1st, uh, Sitting Hammer is in uh, Rock Island, uh, I think, or no, sorry, I think it's uh, Raccoon Motel with Spirit Possession. It's really cool. It's a guitar player from Mayhem. Um, June 7th, uh, oh, that's it. And, and then for the rest of the year, is not even uh, announced yet. So that's it. And he's working on things that are secret, which yeah. I like. And I'm hoping. I'm really not that working that on it. I didn't have to do any work on that. the one show I get to play a year. Who knows? Uh, oh, I'm guys. Gonna... <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> guys. Um, in the meanwhile, meanwhile, like... <laughs> meanwhile, I, I was yeah. just going to say some other stuff. Go ahead, um, <laughs> uh, follow us on TikTok. Follow us on Facebook. Follow us everywhere you can find us. Follow, um, uh, listen to us on Spotify. Follow our playlist on nice. Spotify called The Feeding. Um, that's got a ton of bands from the region that you might not know that definitely deserve to uh, be streamed some. And oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's some other just random funny stuff on there. I just like to throw a random song in there that makes zero sense for people to message me and be like, why is this in here? Nice. Um, yeah. And that's. That's it. Uh, me and Emily are still doing. <laughs> we're still working on our our podcast called Non Essential Fountains. Mm-hmm. Um, we're still stuck on Fast and Furious Eight. We haven't watched that one yet. That's the next episode okay. coming up uh, whenever she feels like doing it. Yeah. Um, well, it's really weak because whenever we have time is really the way I should put it. So that's that's what we're doing. That's still going. Definitely listen to that stuff if you haven't because I don't. I think like ten people have probably. <laughs> <laughs> what we've done so far, right. <laughs> but I don't really do a lot to promote it. So whatever. So that's, the that's it. That's, that's all. life. That's it. Wrestling with music and life. And I'm going to tell you what. Uh, again, just to point out the drywall, we're going to continue to make this thing a little bit uh, more professional. Uh, hopefully, again uh, within the time period that I, <laughs> I hope. Uh, you know, it's there's a lot of things that happen, right? We all have. Well, I have children. I have a family. I have a bunch of things happening. That sometimes will make this a little bit slower, but he has hey. stuff that makes him busy. That's not as fun as the stuff that makes me busy, <laughs> which sucks because you won't know until you know, because obviously <laughs> I hope that that happens for you and him because you guys would make a beautiful job. Fucking but anyway, Gonzo, Gonzo keeps sending me reels on Instagram that I don't open. I don't use my own Instagram. Gonzo, you motherfucker. There's like 20 reels. I don't know what that means, but yes, yes he will. Hey, you guys take it easy and suck our dicks. 